I've just pulled up to go and get myself my copy of Jean-Michel Jarre's new album, Oxymore. It's saying that I have already heard a few tracks that have been released by Jarre from this album, and I do quite like it. Uh, albums for me that scratch the most, that, that you, you close your eyes and you immerse into, yeah, you've got Oxygen, Equinox, Magnetic Fields, those, those three. My actual favourite Jean-Michel album is Waiting for Cousteau, probably closely followed by Chronology. Amazing. I need to do a dedicated video on Waiting for Cousteau. Right, anyway, I've rambled enough already. I need to go across town. Hopefully HMV have got a copy in store. Looking around for the new releases on HMV. It's getting really hard to find the new releases. CDs are just shrinking and shrinking. And I find it. I was getting worried then. I couldn't find it anywhere. But thankfully, it is there. It seems there's a lot of new releases out. Okay, I've been listening to Oxymo a couple of times on headphones, uh, on the digital version from Spotify, walking around. Um, I'm actually quite enjoying it. It's very different. I will say more later on. Um, the spacing of the sound is interesting. I found myself, as I was walking back to the car through the car park, looking around and wondering where a particular noise had come and then realising it was a noise within the music. Anyway, so I'm home now. I can listen to it on my own hi-fi and we'll make some notes as I go through. And welcome to the actual review of Jean-Michel Jarre's Oxymore. It's been out for a few weeks now, but uh, life's been very busy. A lot of life's been happening. There's been little bandwidth uh, for thinking and having the space to bring this together. I'm going to grab it now <laughs> while I got it. So, Oxymore. A lot to say, really. Uh, I, I do like it. It's the short of it and it's the, the long of it. Um, really love the sleeve notes and the artwork, the very kind of textures and pictorial communication of, of the, the physicality of the music, the, the, the feel of the timbre, the sound tones. Um, really, really, really nice booklet. So that, that's cool. Uh, obviously, if you've got the LP, I, I assume this is as big as the LP sleeve. Um very film soundtracky in places, really would accompany good visuals. And I guess it's been made for the uh, 3D uh, immersive technology. So it will be having a, a soundtrack feel to it. Uh, it, in some ways, reminds me of Aero, um, in that it's lots of floating, drifting textures and rhythms. But instead of like aero, it's the floaty, drifty bits that join up the tracks. In Oxymore, it is actually more of the floaty, drifty bits that make up the substance of it instead of um, sort of definitive melodic pieces here on aero. <clears throat> I think it, it introduces a new and wider sound palette. Um, I think there's going to be bits from this popping up in future Jean-Michel Jarre albums and the, the sounds, the, the samples, the feelings from it. Um, it, it. It does feel like something new and take my hat off to Mr Jarre for that. Um, making music for, what, 50, 60 years now and to still be bringing something new it is really, really cool. Um, it's really very good. It's not just a rehash of the same old, same old. Um, and yes, of course, I love oxygen, equinox, magnetic fields and so on. Um, but just do we do we want Jar creating and churning out the same thing again and again in a slightly rehashed format? I don't think so. Um, so I, I love what Jar is trying to do here, uh, trying to hear what he's teaching us. Well, many of us may refer to Jar as the maestro. And with him having studied music and continually engineering music and sounds throughout his life, he wants to bring something from his understanding into a form that people can learn from and engage with. And um, instead of kind of walking out of the classroom and says, I don't want to listen, I don't want to hear what, what you're going to teach us. Um, even if I don't necessarily like it, I still want to understand what Jar 
um, is bringing to us. I, I do count him as having completely shaped my taste in music and indeed, I think some of my uh, understandings and of life and delayed gratification build up pattern and so on. So what is Jar bringing us from Oxymore? I love the ambience of it. Uh, it it's reminded me a lot of Amazonia in that it is um, a flow of feelings, moods uh, that, that come through. But instead of it being guiding you around the exhibition, it kind of just drifts around you. And some of them are more rhythmic, others not. Um, but it's good. It, it does it for me. My one big concern about Jars doing this for high-end audio is that in making something that is best understood and experienced by uh, high-end audio and audio-visual technology, it outprices a lot of people from being able to experience the format as JAR intended. Yeah, it works great for me on stereo. I haven't yet downloaded the binaural uh, format to, to listen to that, but I've enjoyed it. I don't know if and when I'll ever get an Oculus Rift VR headset to experience it in 360. And I don't think I'll ever get a proper 5.1 surround sound um, stereo system. Um, I, ca I can't conceive of, of how I would get the money to uh, have that. So um, it's not music for the masses, if you like. It, it, it's music for those who can afford it. So I, I would like... Like it to be as kind of good to join into on your old sort of mono radio as it would be for the high end stereo, and you can still get that yeah feels good vibrant. And listening through each track, I was looking out for two particular qualities. One does it give me the quick fix. Um, remembering when I was at school and before running for the school bus, like what where could I drop the needle? Where could I go to on the CD to get that like three minute? fix of absolutely sublime jar oh to see me into the day before i'd leg it down the road to the school bus um so quick fixes and the trans-dimensional space scope vibe the bit where you listen to the music and you start going yeah you're in it and it feels so good um the tracks that gave me the quick fix it was neon lips shimmering neon lips <laughs> uh really really good love the Cute Noises has a form very much like Arpeggiator track from the Concerts in China. Also has that space goat, trans-dimensional space goat feeling to it as well. I can listen to it and you're in the music. The track, Oxymore. Again, the last quarter of it, uh, I, I found a, a good quick fix. If I was listening to it on LP, I might carefully drop the needle on the last quarter of Oxymore. And again, that has the trans-dimensional space goat feel to it. But I love the slap and I love the build up and the layering of it as it gets going. The very first track, Agora, um, again, it gives the setup. It gives the feeling that there's, it's going to be about noises and placing of noises when you're listening in headphones. Another quick fix track is Sightgeist. Um, really good. The gasp <laughs> grabs me. Um, it carries me through. It will be one that I listen to and add into a playlist for when I exercise. So actually, I must be one of the few people that actually goes running and exercises to a rhythmic ambient music. <laughs> Brutalism and Epica both give me that quick fix vibe too. A really, yeah, take it away with me quickly. Sonic Land. This is one that particularly has a sound track feel to me. And I love the sound of the tape being pulled out like we're going to be hearing a lot about as we prepare for Christmas. And um, it does take a while to get going, but I, I love the vibe. Animal Genesis, slam, grind. It feels like a soundtrack. Um, could be for like some kind of dystopian detective drama. Uh, Synthy Sisters, I love the cute noises in it uh, and an enjoyable atmosphere. Sex in the Machine. Uh, I liked it in the, as a background piece. Um, it's fair, a lot back like, much of it, it, it's fair as a rewarding sonic environment, audio environment. Crystal Garden, again, I love the atmosphere. Uh, the, and the final two tracks, Brutalism and Epica. Brutalism has edgy, it has traction, it pulls you in. And Epica, I thought, is great as a finale piece, as this, this is like we're going out kind of with a bang, with a high. So 
I do like Oxymore. Um, I've been playing it for several weeks, a lot on headphones, in the car, on my CD player allowed in here, on a, an, an Alexa device elsewhere. So I've heard it on a variety of different places. It doesn't leave me with, like, say, the massive residue of joy, such as Chronology or Waiting for Cousteau or Oxygen. But it is something new. It is something that makes me think. It makes me value what Jar is trying to do. But I won't uh, give Oxymore a rating out of 10 because I, I find those kind of ratings somewhat artificial in their construction it won't be one that i will play massively loads it won't necessarily be a one i will reach to for a quick fix other than maybe dropping to some of the tracks it will be a valued part of my jean michel jar collection and the concluding thought just because something is not what you expect from an artist is perhaps a deviation a detour from previous styles doesn't make it awful. Uh, Jar has obviously spent a lot of time thinking and investing and in conceptualizing the album. Um, it's it's not one. It's like Knopfdrucken where he just press the button. There has been composition, engineering, layering, pains taking efforts to get the product, the sound that he wants to communicate. So. While it won't be up there with the, my very, very favourites, it is still a decent album. And I do commend Oxymore as a good and innovative part of Jean-Michel Jarre's work. Thank you, Jean-Michel.